In the summer of 2010, the US-led coalition in Afghanistan commenced offensive operations to weaken the position of the Taliban in the province of Kandahar. They were using safe havens and strongholds throughout the region to exert influence over the local population. A supply route which ran through the province was fundamental to this expansion of control, as it facilitated the movement of fighters and equipment into central and southwestern Afghanistan. As part of the Coalition Offensive, an Australian Special Operations Task Group operating out of the town of Towering Cot was ordered to conduct an operation into the Shah Wali Kot Valley through which a section of the supply line ran to disrupt Taliban activity in the area. Beginning on the morning of the 10th of June 2010, the operation started with approximately 100 Australian commandos from A Company to Commander Regiment being inserted by several CH-47 Chinook helicopters onto a landing zone in the valley. Moving off the LZ, A Company established themselves in the village of Shinatu, where over the course of the day, the commandos, with air support provided by US Apache helicopters and A-10 Thunderbolt aircraft, held their positions against repeated attacks by a numerically superior Taliban force. Eventually, with casualties mounting, the Taliban decided to withdraw to the village of Tizak in the evening of the 10th of June, to regroup and reorganise before resuming their attacks the following day. However, in the morning of the 11th of June, Australian intelligence had strong indication that several high-ranking Taliban commanders were also present in the village, and keen to develop off their success at Shanatu, the head of the Special Operations Task Group, Lieutenant Colonel Paul Burns, ordered for a kill capture mission against the commanders to be launched immediately. 60 kilometres to the north at their base in Tarankot, a force of five Afghan policemen and 25 Australian SAS operators from 2 Squadron, the Special Air Service Regiment, loaded up onto four US MH-60 Blackhawk helicopters and took off for their objective. At 09.30 on the 11th of June 2010, with an armed escort provided by two US Apache helicopters from the 1st Battalion, the 101st Aviation Regiment, the assault force arrived over Tizak. Approaching the landing zone just outside of the village, two of the Black Hawks touched down under withering enemy fire to enable the two assault teams to get onto the ground. However, no sooner had the SAS operators exited the helicopters, did they become pinned down by Taliban gunfire. At the same time, another Black Hawk landed and dropped off a third SAS team on the top of a ridge, whose task it was to ensure no one left or entered the area, whilst a fourth MH60 flew out from Tizak for four kilometers to secure an entry into the valley. This fourth Black Hawk, which was carrying a six-man sniper team that was also acting as the reserve assault team, reached its objective and neutralized the Taliban outpost, before being ordered to return back to the village and reinforce the assault teams, who were still pinned down on the landing zone and sustaining casualties. Approaching an improvised LZ, the Black Hawk, under heavy fire, touched down enabling the six-man team to exit the aircraft and engage the enemy. From their position, the reserve team identified the machine gun nest that was pinning down the assault force and was able to guide one of the supporting Apache helicopters forward to silence the position. The assault teams, now able to manoeuvre, briefly linked up with the reserve team to safely evacuate two of their wounded, before resuming their advance onto Zak. However, no sooner had they moved off were they pinned down again, this time by four Taliban machine gunners, reinforced with a dozen or so infantry. Assessing the situation, the reserve team found a way to outflank the MG nest, which they discovered to be centered around a mud-walled compound that had been turned into a Taliban strongpoint, the four machine gunners located around its exterior. Leapfrogging their way forward to the compound, providing covering fire for one another, the six-man team was eventually forced to get down and crawl forward as the insurgents began to pour heavy fire in their direction. Forced to use a small mound for cover, Corporal Ben Robert Smith, one of the six operators in the reserve team, realised that there was a small hut adjacent to the compound that had to be secured if his team was to continue forward. Corporal Ben Robert Smith remembered, Jay got up on his knees and sprayed the compound whilst I sprinted to the outbuilding. Just as I reached it, an insurgent aimed an RPG from the window. I killed him and cleared the building. Shortly after, another SES operator threw a grenade which knocked out one of the machine gun positions and momentarily stunned two others, 
providing Corporal Robert Smith a brief opportunity to move forward and take them both out. Corporal Robert Smith continued, I started moving from the outbuilding and two AK-47 guys peeled back into the compound. I don't know whether it was poor training, panic, or whether he found it too awkward to swing his MG around, but the machine gunner couldn't seem to get onto me until I reached a break in the wall. By then I was already down on one knee and I shot him twice in the head. I then spotted the other machine gunner, moved a little further along the wall, dropped down and killed him as well. With three of the machine gunners down, the corporal was joined by two other operators at the entrance to the building, who made the decision to storm in and clear the compound. Corporal Robert Smith detailed this phase. D saw one insurgent inside but had a stoppage on his weapon. He made way for me and I burst in and killed the guy. I saw another insurgent in the room but had a stoppage myself. I moved along the wall while Jay entered and shot him at point blank range. Making their way further into the compound, clearing each room, the three man team made their way to the rear entrance, where they found the 4th Taliban machine gun post, already taken out. Simultaneously as the three operators cleared through the compound, the other three members of the reserve team secured the right flank of the building, during which they engaged and neutralised an unknown number of insurgents who were attempting to flee from the area. With the main enemy strong point in Tazak eliminated, the assault teams linked up with the reserve team and began clearing the village, storming each building one by one in search of the high valley targets. By day's end, the village was declared clear of the Taliban, and despite being outnumbered 4-1 to one at the start of the engagement, the 25 operators from 2 Squadron, supported by the 5 Afghan policemen, had made a complete rout of the enemy forces in the Tazak area. The next day on the 12th, it was estimated that the air assault into Tazak had neutralised over 70 insurgents, including the taking down of 10 senior commanders of the Taliban, whilst the Australians and Afghans incurred only 2 wounded over the course of the day's fighting. Additionally, the Australians reported two civilians had been caught up in the crossfire, although their wounds were assessed to have been minor. For his actions at Tizak on the 11th of June 2010, Corporal Ben Robert Smith was awarded the Australian Victoria Cross, whilst a further 13 operators from 2 Squadron and 2 Commando Regiment represented with other military decorations for their courage and bravery at Tizak and Shinatu. Corporal Ben Robert Smith concludes, I was awarded the Victoria Cross for my part in the battle, but others were decorated for acts of bravery that were equally deserving that day. Nobody knows what they did, so it's up to me as the one in the public eye, to speak for them. Then again, the most meaningful recognition for us in the SES comes from within, not from the public. When your fellow operators tell you that you've done something really well, it's the greatest feeling in the world.